so uh, we have been starting our uh, seminar for uh, today with uh, we are starting the seminar uh, fresh from uh, the first chapter and we will continue with the seminar throughout the year so that you can cover most of the uh, theory uh, part of your uh, examination so uh, the first uh, the presentation today will be basically on hiatus hernias and uh, to start with i request dr ran bijay who is a second year junior yes, resident sir. at uh 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 hiatus anatomy okay uh, good morning vijay yes yes sir, good morning shivajyoti ghosh dr shivajyoti ghosh professor of surgery at calcutta medical college would moderate the session with me yes sir yeah yes. run vijay you please yes. share your screen and start uh milan can you sir Good morning, sir. Uh, today's uh, topic. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, today's topic is a surgical anatomy of esophagus. Uh, now you can uh, see the uh, whole of the alimentary canal from the mouth and tongue, the esophagus, the stomach, the duodenum, the small bowel, the large bowel, the rectum, and the anus. This is totally the digestive system. Now, uh, started with the esophagus. Uh, the esophagus is a tubular structure that uh, length is about 25 centimeter long. Uh, it begins at the continuation of the pharynx at the level of the sixth cervical vertebra. It pierces the diaphragm at the level of the tenth thoracic vertebra to join the stomach. Now, it comes in the midline, but as it descends through the neck, it uh, uh, inclines to the left side. Now, introduction. The esophagus serves as a conduit between the pharynx and the stomach. It begins at the tripopharynx at the C5, C5, C6 level, it passes through the diaphragm to join the cardiac of the stomach at the detail. Length of the stomach, uh, the length of the uh, esophagus varies. It depends on the height and the build of the person. So the length is uh, basically 23 to 37 centimeter, correlate with the individual height, and it is usually longer in men than women. Now the location and the description. The anteriorly, uh, the anteriorly, the uh, in the esophagus anterior, the trachea, the recurrent laryngeal nerve ascend one on each side in the group <coughs> between the trachea and the esophagus. Now the posteriorly, the prevertebral layer of the cervical fascia, the longus coli muscle, and the vertebral column. Now laterally on each side lie the lower thyroid gland and carotid sheath. Basically, the laterally there are four structures. One is the carotid sheath, the inferior thyroid artery. The lobe of the thyroid gland and also in recurrent laryngeal nerve is also found in the lateral side. Now, anatomically divided into three parts. One is a cervical, uh, that is a basically four to five centimeter, and second is a thoracic, uh, and third is a abdominal. Now, if you uh, divide in a functional division, uh, the upper esophageal sphincter that is basically the form for the tricopharyngeal uh, muscle. And the esophageal body and the lower esophageal inspector that is basically uh, formed by the the uh, circular muscle of the esophagus. Now we see this. Uh, this is the cervical esophagus and this is the upper esophageal sphincter that's uh, uh, in behind the trachea and uh, this is the aorta and this is the th thoracic esophagus and the abdominal esophagus. The three part of the esophagus. Now anatomic division. The cervical. The cervical begins at the lower end of Ranbija, you are muted. I think he lost connection. Uh, just a minute, you're trying to contact Ranvi, I might be disconnected. 
sorry sir yeah yeah back uh, sorry sir oh, that some disturbance yeah yeah survival uh, the, the survival began at the lower end of the fairing the level of six vertebra or lower border of required cartilage and extend to the thoracic inlet that is sir one minute sir yeah yeah sir yeah sir one minute the net problems and the thoracic inlet that is supra sternal notch basically at the junction of the sternal uh, clavicular joint that is the 18 cm from the incisor the thoracic the upper thoracic from the thoracic inlet to the level of tracheal bifurcation that is 18 to 23 cm from the incisor the mid thoracic from the tracheal bifurcation midway to the gastroesophageal junction that is 24 to 32 cm now lower thoracic from the midway between the tracheal bifurcation and gastroesophageal junction to the g junction including abdominal esophagus that is 32 to 40 cm now the abdominal consider part of lower thoracic esophagus that is 32 to 40 cm now <clears throat> the cervical part if you uh, uh, if you see the relation of the cervical part there is a uh, that is a uh, posteriorly if you see there are a uh, vertebral uh, there is basically uh, there are structures that uh, found posteriorly are lr fascia that is prevertebral fascia uh, and uh, there is a longissimus muscle and the vertebral column now if it's uh, if you see the laterally laterally there are basically for structure that found in the cervical part uh, that uh, is the carotid sheath that is the inferior thyroid artery and uh, the uh, inferior thyroid uh, lobe uh, lobe of the thyroid and uh, uh, lobe of thyroid and uh, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve now if you see the anteriorly anteriorly there are trachea and the uh, larynx and the trachea and the some uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve now thoracic part <clears throat> the thoracic part basically started from the uh, t1 uh, and t2 uh, to uh, t1 to t9 to t10 uh, in the thorax it passes downward and to the left through superior then to posterior mediastinum at the level of the sternal angle the aortic arch pushes the esophagus again to the midline basically there, there are three curve Uh, in the esophagus, uh, one uh, is the neck, and uh, in the uh, second is the left uh, principal uh, primary bronchus, and the third in the uh, just below the bifurcation of the trachea and pericardium. And in the first part, there is a left de deviation, and in the second part, the right deviation, and the third part is again left deviation. Now, anterior relation, the trachea, the first is the founded trachea. If you go from above to downward, there is a trachea, the recurrent laryngeal nerve. the left principal bronchus pericardium and the left atrium now posterior region the body of the thoracic vertebra the, the thoracic duct that basically originate from the t7 and uh, terminate at the t4 level the aegyptus vein the po right posterior intercostal artery the descending thoracic aorta at the lower end Now the lateral relationship on the right side is the right mediastinal pleura, the terminal part of the aegyptus vein. And on the left side, the left mediastinal pleura, the left subclavian artery, aortic arch, and the thoracic duct. Now upper esophageal sphincter, the separate the pharynx from the esophagus, that is basically formed by the a uh, cricopharyngeal muscle the cricopharyngeal uh, muscle that is originated uh, from the uh, cricoid and the thyroid it basically had two part one is a oblique and one is a transverse the transverse uh, muscle that is cricopharyngeal that forms the upper esophageal sphincter the length is 3 cm and the uh, three skeletal muscle group that is the inferior uh, inferior epigastric inferior constrictor cricopharyngeus and proximal esophagus the upper cricopharyngeal the upper cricopharyngeal or upper esophageal sphincter prevent air passing into the esophagus during inspiration and the aspiration of esophageal content now diaphragmatic hiatus the esophagus uh, passes from the chest into the abdomen through the diaphragmatic hiatus opening in the right crush of the diaphragm the approximately 2 cm of the distal esophagus normally lie within the abdomen 
the lower esophageal and sphincter that also in a 3 cm in length and this is formed by the externally by the external uh, skeletal muscle of pleura of diaphragm and internally by the smooth muscle of the distal esophagus the cardiac or the lower esophageal sphincter prevent the reflex of uh, acid gastric content into the esophagus now esophageal constriction the esophagus has three anatomic constriction the first is a pharyngo esophageal constriction the first is at the junction with the pharynx that is pharyngo esophageal junction and this is about the diameter is about 1.7 into 2.3 cm now that the second is the arotobronchial basically the, on the basis of anatomical uh, they are the two different constriction that one is the uh, aortic and one is a bronchial the aortic is a basically the aortic is a basically uh, terminate at the level of the T4 and the bron uh, bronchus that uh, terminate at the level of uh, T5. And a diaphragmatic construction, the third at a junction with the stomach and the terminate at the level of, uh, found at the level of the T10. Uh, and uh, basically there are three major construction, but sometimes in occasionally there are uh, some minor construction are also found. The first is the retro external construction that's uh, found between the pharyngeal esophageal and the erotico bronchial constriction the, uh, the second that is from the cardiac constriction the cardiac constriction is basically uh, seen in some patient uh, uh, in uh, in which the mitral stenosis is found the left uh, the left at, uh, uh, left atrium is become enlarged and it's uh, compressed and become the constriction and the third uh, the third is uh, uh, the third is due to supra diaphragmatic and uh, it is uh, uh, due to the tortuous and uh, sclerotic aorta Now, if you uh, if you see the blood supply, the arterial supply, sorry, the anatomic layer of esophageal wall, the innermost is a mucosa, this is muscularis mucosa, that sub mucosa, the muscularis propria and the adventia. Now, if you see muscularis uh, muscle at a two part, one is a circular and one is a longitudinal part. And uh, the uh, the sub mucosa uh, is the thickest part of the uh, esophagus and is freely mobile now if you see the blood supply the arterial supply if it uh, see the upper third of the esophagus is supplied by the inferior thyroid artery the middle third by the branch from the direct branch from the aorta that is descending thoracic aorta and the lower third branch by the left uh, gastric artery and uh, uh, left uh, inferior uh, uh, phrenic artery. Now the venous drainage, the upper third drain into the upper third drain into the inferior thyroid vein, the middle third into the agigas vein, the lower third into the left gastric vein, which is a tributary of the portal vein. Now the lymphatic drainage, the upper third is drained in the deep cervical node, the middle third is drained into the superior, inferior and mediastinal node. The lower third is drained in the celiac lymph node in the abdomen. The nerve supply, it is supplied by the sympathetic fiber from the sympathetic trunk. The parasympathetic supply comes from the vagus nerve. The inferior to the root of the lung, the vagus nerve joins the sympathetic nerve to form the esophageal plexus. The left vagus lie anterior to the esophagus, the right vagus lie posterior to it. Yeah. Dr. Ghosh, you can have uh, some discussion on the anatomy presentation. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ran Vijay, for a very nice description of the, or rather, recapitulation of the anatomy of the esophagus and the thank you, sir. Uh, media screen wall as well. However, since uh, today's topic uh, more focuses more on the hiatus hernia, so it will be more relevant if you could uh, uh, describe a little bit about the lower esophageal sphincters, which is the physiological sphincters, and, uh, and the components of that sphincters are more important. So, so far, uh, hiatus hernia rather GRD is more important. So uh, you should know more about the physiology of uh, lower esophageal sphincters, how this uh, pressure 
uh, decreases in certain conditions. No, no about that. However, since your your topic was anatomy, so um, and the hiatus hernia is concerned, the anatomy of the endoscopic anatomy you have uh, you have briefly uh, described about the endoscopic anatomy. Uh, and endoscopic ultrasonography data you have described, but the endoscopic anatomy, uh, which is uh, one of the important uh, diagnostic uh, landmarks for diagnosis of hiatus hernia. So you are supposed to know about the A-ring, the B-ring, uh, and the uh, scat skills ring. So these are the all important uh, landmarks for the diagnosis of uh, hiatus hernia. And also it will be preferable if you could uh, put up some... Uh, Photographs of the barium swallow, which corresponds with the anatomical landmark. Of the yes, sir. So uh, I think uh, those who are listening to this, you should uh, this uh, thing and you read book about uh, from your book. Until the anatomy as such is not required, but if you appear in the exam or in the theoretical and practical discussion, then you get. Good morning. And 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 uh, Dr. Ghosh, and regarding the hiatus, there are some variations in the yes, in okay. the uh, Israel hiatus. Normally the two two crura meets. Yes, and the Israel comes through that. And in most of the cases, the heart, the right crash of the diaphragm splits to enclose the esophagus. So these are there are some variations in uh, heart transformation and the lower esophagus sphincter. Rarely the left crash may uh, go around the esophagus. Okay, so there, there are some variations in uh, heart anatomy because uh, we are discussing the heart hernia. This is important. And yes. Uh, if you talk of uh, the basic anatomy of the hiatal defect, the sliding hiatus hernia is because of sliding up of the stomach in the same Israel hiatus. And the parasomial variety is where you have sliding up some other contents uh, along the esophagus. So they are the, uh, basically dependent on the esophageal uh, anatomy and the hiatal anatomy. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hari Prashad. Prashad is second year junior resident at... Uh, South Eastern Railway Garden Hospital to speak on uh, clinical presentation and investigation for a patient of hiatus hernia. Hari Prashad, please. So good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Sir, screen sharing. Someone is sharing, sir. Yeah, Hari Prashad, you can share your screen now. Yes, sir. He is disconnected. Really? <coughs> huh? Hello? Yes, yes. You are audible. Share your screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this visible, sir? Not yet. For 
are all similar, na? Get all the sides, right? Well, base do. If it, they can share, they will share. Otherwise, ये similar में ज़्यादा problem होता है. Sir, as right now visible, sir. Not yet. You you have shared screen. Y- yes, sir. But it's not coming up. So many minutes. हाँ तो शर्मा Yes, sir. Your screen is visible now. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, start. Sir, hiatal hernia. It can be a sliding hiatal hernia, which is a type one sliding hiatal hernia. And it can be a para esophageal hernia, which belongs to type two, three, four. And the most common among all hiatal hernia is the type one. And the most common among the para esophageal hernia is the type three. All para esophageal hernias have hernial sacs, and they are the true hernias. So these are the types. In this is a normal uh, gastroesophageal junction, and uh, this is a type one sliding hernia where the gastroesophageal junction ascends uh, upward along with the stomach, and this is a type two. And type two, type three, and type four are the para esophageal hernias, which is the hernia herniation will be anterior parallel to the esophagus. So we can see in the type two, the gastroesophageal junction is intact. But the fundus of the stomach is seeing uh, protruding towards the uh, esophagus superiorly. So this is a true hiatus hernia, and the type three is a uh, mixed thing where the gastroesophageal junction also ascends along with a, a separate uh, hiatal defect in which the gastric fundus will be protruding, and this is a type four along with gastroesophageal junction also a organ like a colon or a liver also herniates along with, and the paraesophageal hernias are more common in women. Increase incidence increases with the age. and the gastric valvulus with necrosis or perforation of stomach can occur a uh, non surgical approach in an asymptomatic patient is uh, advised in most of the in, uh, what is the pathophysiology the widening of diaphragmatic crura at the esophageal hiatus and the stretching of uh, phreno esophageal membrane which can balloon into the posterior mediastinum pushing along the pad of fat and the most common structure to herniate is the gastric fundus and the risk of acute strangulation in a case of paraesophageal hernia is 1 percentage in a year and surgical options can be given for patients below 60 years of age in an asymptomatic case the clinical features in type 1 as i say there is no uh, uh, separate uh, protrusion so it is just a, a, a gastroesophageal junction will get ascended so most of the features of type 1 will be of grd uh, reflux gastritis kind of features but in other types we have we can uh, see obstructive symptoms like dysphagia odynophagia epigastric pain chest pain chest pain because uh, uh, if it gets herniated the most common site is a retrocardiac site so it can also cause chest pain and ecg wave may strain pattern we can see and the patient can have early satiety and hematemesis shortness of breath due to the mass effect and the evaluation we can go with barium esophagogram upper gi endoscopy chest x ray esophageal manometry can aid in planning of anti reflux surgery in the fu- in future and ambulatory 24 hour ph monitoring uh, if uh, it is a type 1 with grd symptoms and ccd thorax so barium esophagogram can differentiate between type 1 and type 2 where in type 1 the gas uh, only the gar- uh, gastroesophageal junction get ascended uh, rather in type 2 where along with uh, gg junction uh, fundus also get ascended and the size of hiatal hernia is inversely related to total lung capacity and vital capacity if the size of hiatal hernia is large then it obviously it will decreases the vital capacity of the lung so this is the type 1 we can see the in barium mill swallow uh, gastroesophageal junction also with some part of the stomach get ascended and in type 2 we can see separate gastric fundus and in type 3 we can see uh, uh, both uh, gg junction also got ascended and also a part of uh fundus also get uh, protruded separately this is a type 4 obviously you can see some part of colon get ascended and this is 
upper GI endoscopy, we can see the G junction uh, hernial contents. Uh, can see, we can see the ulcers. These are called the cameron ulcers or stress ulcers, uh, which is most commonly seen over the lesser curvature of the stomach. This is the uh, type. This is the type one where GE junction is get, get ascended from the diaphragmatic notch, and uh, right side is the type two where we can also see a fun, part of fundus ascending up. And uh, this is type three. We can see uh, both GE junction and also the part of fundus after doing a J maneuver in upper G endoscopy. We, we can notice both get ascended, and uh, here we can see fundus above the and diaphragmatic ring both are above the GE junction. And chest imaging, we can see the test, tension pneumothorax, retrocardiac uh, air bubble shadow. Uh, and in CCD thorax, we can see the air fluid level. So uh, usually uh, chest imaging can visualize cardiac compression, tension, gastrothorax. So, so thank you, sir. Hi. Sir, uh, yeah, yeah. sir, clinical features and investigations uh, uh, my topics are that sort. I thought uh... well, you should have elaborated a little more about the manometry and others importance of manometry. How it, Dr. Uh, Ghosh. Uh, 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 yeah. So uh, one thing you must understand at the beginning that the hiatus hernia and the GRD are very very much associated. So. If you, are, yes, if you are talking about the hiatus hernia, we also got to know a lot more about the GRD. So yes, uh, basically, GRD is, is a, a strength of spectrum of disease, and one of the cause of GRD is rather a commonest cause of GRD is probably hiatus hernia. But that does not yes, mean that all the uh, all the GRDs will have only hiatus hernia. So uh, when a, when a patient uh, uh, appears, the initial symptoms are like GRD. Now, to understand GRD, you must know that GRD can be uh, categorized into three main groups. Right? One is non-erosive reflux disease, that's NERD, and the erosive uh, reflux disease, ERD, and in terms, uh, in, in, in days to come, it may turn into Barrett esophagus or BE. So NERD, ERD, and BE, these are more or less three clinical entity which encompasses the GRD. So sure. all the patients have the initial symptoms similar, and then we'll have to categorize uh, which patient falls into which group. So to evaluate uh, these patients, uh, uh, there are certain symptoms, and symptom symptoms can also be classified as the typical symptoms, which are usually regurgitation and the heartburn. It can be atypical symptoms, as you mentioned, it could be a chest pain. And uh, it could be other respiratory uh, problem, even it can have a uh, dental problem. So, and there may exactly. be symptoms uh, due to the complications like strictures, ulcer formation, perforate, uh, I mean bleeding. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. So once we uh, see a patient we have, who has come with the symptoms of uh, a GRD, so we'll have to start uh, evaluating the patient. So for evaluation, we have a host of uh, investigations. So some of the investigations you have mentioned, as Professor Sa has mentioned, that manometry is uh, one of the main important uh, investigations for GRD, and rather the gold standard for the uh, investigations for GRD is 24 hours pH monitoring. pH monitoring. Right. So these you have to uh, read in detail, and you have to learn. There are certain you know, scoring systems uh, for. GRD and depending on the scoring system, we'll have to decide the patient uh, can be divided which type of treatment because there are a host of treatments for GRD starting from medical management and ending in surgical management. So yes, these sir. are the spectrum of uh, disease. The spec there's a lot of investigations and there's a lot of treatment options. So uh, I think uh, in, in the next management of heart as hernia, uh, Dr. Islal will uh, describe and uh, discuss on that. And and, and again, uh, <laughs> regarding the paraesophageal hernias, one of the common present paraesophageal hernias are uh, complications like strangulation. Yes. So that is the reason you mentioned that these patients should be treated early and uh, sometime even SMD patient may be treated. So the most yes. of the patient with paraesophageal hernia may present with complications like strangulation, and uh, and the patient may can present with acute thoracic emergency or they can be the acute abdomen also. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we proceed with the thank last you, presentation by Dr. Ijlal, who is a second year resident at uh, Howrah District Hospital. So Ijlal will tell us about the management of uh, hydrocele. Ijlal, please share your screen. Hello, good morning, sir. I will be continuing with the last part of this seminar that is management of hiatal hernia. Conservative management, it is reserved for the less symptomatic patients or old and debilitated patients. The first line pharmacological management of the symptomatic hiatal hernia is PPI, that is proton pump inhibitors. Uh, they decrease the gastric acid secretion. Second is the prokinetic drugs. They increase the esophageal and gastric motility. Uh, like uh, domperidone and metoclopramide. Second is uh, lifestyle modification. Like we have to ask the patient to uh, reduce the weight and alteration of diet. Like uh, they have to take le less fatty diet and earlier meal and smaller proportion of meals. And sleeping with the head of the pet elevated. We have to ask the patient to uh, avoid smoking or and decrease the alcohol intake because uh, nicotine and alcohol are, uh, they commonly inhibit the lower esophageal inspector. Endoscopic treatment, it is reserved for the patient with the high risk. And uh, here the stomach is partially reduced by the gastroscope and it is fixed intra-abdominally with the double percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy uh, with or without lap laparoscopic assistance. Surgical management. Surgical man management is uh, indicate the indication for the surgical management. If the patient is uh, uh, patient remains symptomatic despite of the maximal medical therapy, uh, and there is a increased risk of complication because of uh, uh, strangulation of volvulus, especially in type two, type uh, type two, type three, and type four uh, uh, hiatal hernias. And the patient is having nutrition failure due to gastric outlet obstruction. And fourth uh, are the symptoms caused by the mechanical factors like postparandial um, uh, postparandial chest pain uh, that will respond only to the surgical restoration of the normal anatomy. We have surgical op uh, options like open approach. Uh, uh, open approach is to uh, th thoracotomy and laparotomy. Minimal invasive techniques like laparoscopic and transthoracic, transthoracic, and we have uh, anti-reflux procedures like Nissen's fundoplication and Toppet's fundoplications. Advantage of the laparoscopic approach in hiatal hernia surgeries: uh, the blood blood loss is very less, and there is less third spacing of the fluids. It is quick recovery. It is especially suitable for the elderly and debilitated patients. And the view of the operative field is magnified, facilitating uh, precise identification of the tissue planes and uh, uh, vessels. There, because of the use of angled laparoscope, it allows the visualization of the mediastinum that cannot be obtained via laparotomy approach. Principles of hiatal surgery. Uh, first is uh, chloroplasty. We have uh, during this uh, chloroplasty, we have to reduce the hernia and that the hiatus is reapproximated. And the large, if the defect is very large, then it is reinforced with the mesh repair. Second is fundoplication, where the gastric fundus is wrapped around the lower esophageal tincture and stitched in the place. It strengthens the lower esophageal inspector and keep the gastroesophageal junction in the place. Wrapping is done in the two ways. First is partial. Partial is also known as stop it. It is around, uh, like wrapping is around 270 degree uh, uh, around, the fun, uh, around the fundus of the stomach. And the full is around 360 degree. You can see this is uh, Toppert's uh, fundoplication. Uh, the lower distal esophagus is wrapped with the fundus of the stomach around 270, uh, 270 degree. And this is uh, uh, Nissen's fundoplication. Here the uh, lower esophageal inspector is uh, wrapped with the fundus around 360 degree. Role of fundoplication. 
anti reflux procedures helps in the maintenance maintaining the sorry anti reflux procedure helps in the maintaining the stomach in a intra abdominal position the bulky nature of the wrap and the suture fixation to the crora makes it more difficult for stomach to reherniate into the chest it is very difficult to assess which patient will have reflux symptoms when the hernia is reduced third is failure to perform anti reflux procedures can lead to symptomatic post op reflux in 20 to 40% of the patients complications intraop complications like uh, pneumothorax bleeding perforation of the esophagus or stomach there may be uh, vagal injury early post op complications like uh, subcutaneous emphysema fundal fundal necrosis fundal necrosis is uh, fundal necrosis wound infection fundal necrosis occurs if the uh, fundal plication is too much tight or uh, pleural repair is too much narrow and uh, long term post op complications like recurrence abdominal blotting and dysphagia if the uh, this way thank you well dr uh, islal uh, you have given a good uh, descriptions of the management of uh, hiatus hernia uh, well uh, management of hiatus hernia basically initially it should be a medical management and uh, if the medical management goes well fine if medical management fails or there are certain other indications then the surgery is the main stay of treatment and basically nowadays with the uh, with the more use of laparoscopic surgery there are certain group of patient which were previously thought to be uh, uh, treated conservatively now the group has also been uh, uh, been advocated for early surgery because surgery gives a long standing uh, good relief and durable uh, uh, success durable success for these uh, conditions but you should know also know about the base some certain principles of the surgery the principles are basically for the creation of intra abdominal length of esophagus that is very important and again recreation of the high pressure zone that is lower esophageal sphincter which is a high pressure zone that should be recreated at the lower end of the esophagus and if there is associated any hiatus hernia that should be repaired and if there is sometimes uh, in case of paraesophageal hernia that area should be reinforced with the uh, um, prosthetic mesh so these are the uh, basic principles of the surgery now you have different types of operations for hiatus hernia and uh, these operations are, are specifically designed for the specific condition so this is not all for all. like mission fundoplication is the gold standard for the type one hiatus hernia and other than this we have two pay you see we have just described there may be anterior wrap there may be posterior wrap and, and there also another one is door fundoplication so these are the for the various uh, uh, conditions of hiatus um, hernia associated hiatus hernia and uh, other operations are also there like uh, gastroplasty uh, or heels operations so these are the various other types of um, operations for hiatus hernia but that have specific indications for the specific management okay. one part of hiatus hernia uh, surgery or, or management you have not mentioned is the <laughs> Barrett esophagus because this is one of the complications of hiatus hernia, and uh, in Barrett, remember that Barrett esophagus is one of the pre-malignant conditions. So, so one of the dreaded com complications of uh, hiatus hernia is the uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma, and Barrett esophagus is one of the pre-malignant conditions. So, if we can identify this Barrett esophagus at the early stage, so uh, this uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma. Uh, which can be uh, prevented. So there are again a host of uh, management for various esophagus, starting from endoscopic management, submucosal resections, uh, to the various types of endotherapy, laser therapy, radiofrequency ablation, photodynamic therapy. So lots of uh, options are available. And um, other than this, the uh, in case of uh, very 
uh, high grade dyspepsias might have to go for triple esophagectomy. So these are the spectrum of the surgeries uh, that can be uh, done in case of uh, hiatus hernia and its complications. So remember that uh, they can, even after this various type of anterior flush surgery or fundoplication, there can be recurrence. And once there is recurrence, uh, it should again, it can be retreated by surgery, but this time it should be done in centers, which, are, which is very high volume, has expertise, and we are doing uh, this surgery uh, very frequently. Dr. Saha. Yeah. Uh, and regarding the uh, uh, conservative treatment, uh, you should be emphasizing on the uh, some patients require higher doses of PPI and, and okay. some may be given even uh, twice daily dose of PPI. And if you go to the current recommendations, uh, prokinetics were prescribed uh, more frequently, but it is now observed that the prokinetics are not always helpful in patients with uh, uh, the reflux disease. So prokinetics should be used with caution because prokinetics have a lot of other side effects. And next is you have mentioned some uh, measures, uh, lifestyle modifications, uh, that there are some food which triggers uh, reflux disease, like chocolates, alcohol, coffee. So a patient should avoid these trigger foods. And another important thing is patients should not lie down immediately after taking food. There should be a gap at least two to three hours before you find that patient needs uh, to go to the bed. So this uh, PPI doses, uh, this uh, role of uh, prokinetics needs to be reviewed. And regarding the surgical treatment, you have uh, correct, you have given the outline, but the point is the in type two, type three, and type four hernias, uh, the indication is more liver because in this case there is higher chance of uh, complications. Okay. In type one, the primary treatment is conservative, hmm. and type two, three, four, these are the situations where you need to consider early surgical treatment to avoid complications. Okay. And then the type of surgery is this. The point is uh, whether to use mesh or not. Uh, if you have a large hiatal defect, these large hiatal defects should be reinforced by mesh reinforcement. And again, what type of mesh should you use? You are using a mesh in the uh, abdominal cavity. So the more and more recommendations are using a composite mesh or at best a biological mesh. Uh, you should not use a simple proline mesh because it is observed that this mesh can erode into the esophagus. Okay. Yes. So any, any question from any of the uh, uh, other uh, students? Any question? Any, anything in the chat box? No. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ghosh. Thank you, all the speakers. Okay, so we'll continue with this uh, type of uh, uh, seminars covering uh, almost all the topics. So it may take a little more time, but we'll go on uh, slowly so that uh, next time you might take up uh, achalasia, cardia, and some other uh, benign severe conditions. So, and then we'll go to the carcinoma esophagus. So it will take some time, but we'll try to cover the theoretical aspect of the DNB examination. Dr. Shah, one suggestion to the students who will be preparing yeah. for the seminars. Once you prepare the uh, presentation, please uh, get it checked or have suggestions from your consultant so that uh, yeah. more relevant points can be discussed in your presentation. Yeah, yeah. That, that, is a good, that is a good solution. Uh, okay. everyone, everyone has done. You, can, you can present uh, locally to your uh, other uh, uh, students in the same institution and discuss with mentor so that we can have a a comprehensive coverage of the topic. Because you see, uh, if you give a comprehensive coverage, that helps you and helps the other students who are attending. And we are keeping all these records in our uh, Facebook page. So you can access on later on and you can have the information. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.